Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dojo Live this Thursday, December, December 15th, 2022. My name is Kim Landis, and it's my pleasure to be hosting along with America Guerrero today. Hello, everybody. Thank you. For Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, America. And of course, the best person and the most important person on Dojo Live today is our guest, Mike Lee, who is the CEO of Fantika. Mike, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Kim and America, for having me. Yes, in Montreal. I love it. So, you know, Mike, this is the final Dojo Live show of 2022, if you can believe it or not. So wow. we're going to end the year with a bang. Um, so All happy right. to learn from you today. Okay. So, uh, you know, today's topic really is all about something that's, I think, really important to many, many companies out there and of high interest, and that's funding, how to access it, how to democratize it. But before we get into that, um, we would like to get to know you, Mike, a bit more. If you could share a bit of your story, your passion, and how that sort of led up to your time with Fundika. Thank you. Sure. So uh, thank you, Kim. So if you kind of go back, I'm a... Uh... I was kind of this kid that was probably a little bit geeky in high school, uh, was very interested in things, liked looking Guilty. at different things. <laughs> <laughs> um, went on, became an engineer, um, then did my MBA CFA, and I kind of went out there and I quickly found out that I'm a bit of an explorer. Uh, I think a, a bit of um, you know an entrepreneur as well, and that probably comes from you know some of my grandparents and parents. I think I, it kind of is in my DNA. Mm -hmm. And and when I got out there, I, I after working for a number of years as an engineer, um, I quickly realized that finding funding is a huge challenge for small businesses, technology ones, manufacturing ones, really any kind of business. Mm -hmm. It was a big challenge and one that was you know there was really a problem that needed to be solved. Um, and so my career kind of started out. I was working for more traditional companies, and then at a certain point, I decided, okay, I really want to address this this problem head on. Yeah. And uh, eventually, um, we started as a kind of community project within another company. And then five years ago, Fundiga was born. And Fundiga's mission really is to make funding simpler, to really shorten the string between funding and entrepreneurs. I love it. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we know the, the base now of who Fundiga is and the problem that you're solving. But how do you go about doing that? What's the problem you're solving in the way in which you're approaching it? Right. So there are more than 10,000 government funding programs out there. Uh, and so what we've done is we've actually gone and aggregated all these programs together. And we do that in a few ways. Uh, we have funders. That's what we love the most. We have a few hundred funders who are updating their programs and we're incentivizing them to do that. Okay. Uh, we have these collaborative partners. So some universities, some other kind of centers of excellence, we'd like to call them, that are supporting us in this effort as well. Um, we have funding analysts, and they're the ones who really supervise and make sure the whole system runs well. And then finally, we have these bots. So we have discovery bots, and we have tracking bots, and they really try to automate it as much as possible. Having said that, still, the most important thing is that these funding analysts, through a framework, really manage all this information. So we aggregate all this information, and then we apply some intelligence on it, some algorithms, so that it is comprehensive it's up to date and it's most importantly relevancy ranked. So any entrepreneur that comes in doesn't just see, okay, here's another funding program among the thousands out there. They're going to see the most relevant one for them followed by the second most relevant mm -hmm. and so on. So that's ultimately what we want to do. So we're trying to make funding kind of like, you know, the search engine you'd see in Google for funding it works a little differently. It's called faceted search it works with filters. It works with some AI in a lot of different ways. We do have a keyword search as well in there. We're trying mm -hmm. to combine all these methods to make it as um, effective as possible. I love it. Now, before we get on to the exact topic today, I do have a question. You said 10,000 different avenues, really, um, places from the government and others to receive this funding. Um, knowing that you're with in Montreal, is this specific to Canada? Or are we talking about Canada, US? Or how does how does that work in terms of geography? Right. So a little bit of our story here. So we did start in Canada and we are um, we, we, we capture all the kind of government funding programs across Canada. We've also captured all the private sector funding programs across okay. Canada. So when I'm talking about this, so there's grants, tax credits, loans, so public sector, private sector, loan guarantees, uh, different forms of equity and other we'll call it institutional or traditional funding sources. So we captured we went out and really mined and boiled the ocean to try and find all the programs we could in Canada. That was really our test case. And okay. 
came up with that and we ended up with thousands of program. And then we moved across to the U.S. and said, okay, let's go ahead and do that as well. In the U.S., we've really done it for everything that is government funding as well as private sector grants. Nice. Uh, we brought all those together. So all together, we kind of look at all of North America. We cover all the government. We cover all the, the grants across North America for businesses. And that's where we're into the, you know, over 10,000 programs. Um, and we're also starting to kind of cover other areas as well. Uh, more non-traditional or some service areas as well, but that's really more the future. Cool. Thank you for clarifying. So now let's get to it. This idea of democratizing access to funding. What's the question we're answering today, America? How to become a funding champion for SME and the underrepresented. So please share with us your secrets. All right. So when we first built this, I, I really just built it because it was a frustrating problem that we were seeing all the time. I was working with lots of businesses. I had helped businesses get uh, funding. I think I've helped businesses get over $350 million in funding um, wow. you know, over the years. So I've done a lot of that. And it was always a, a frustrating challenge to figure out you know, which one's out there. So we decided, okay, we, let's build this, this funding. We call it a search engine or matching engine. And we built it. And really, that was the reason we really built it is just to make it more accessible. Of course, in doing all that, we've not only made it accessible to your classic entrepreneur, but we've also made it even more accessible or equally accessible, I should say, but kind of a new thing for the underrepresented groups. So we're talking about women, we're talking immigrant, we're talking mm -hmm. the youth. Um, we have a whole variety of different underrepresented groups that this now actually brings forward all these programs for these different groups and make sure that they're very findable because ultimately they're the groups that have the hardest time finding it. The good news is that there are more and more programs for these underrepresented groups. Yeah, I think that's a really important story to tell and something to tap into because I think I feel that it's easy for me at least. You mentioned immigrants and, you know, being from the United States and, and mm -hmm. uh, that's ultimately what, our history is right founded on immigrants and we have in this mind that this there's this willingness this bootstrap that you have to do anything and everything and a lot of people do right in order to um, achieve their dreams and it just i love that you're able to equalize that just a little bit because it literally shouldn't have to cost you an arm and a leg right um, <laughs> to right. to get to get started and i think that's traditionally this this we kind of tend to want to glorify that and make it sound like that's the way it should be, that it has to be, or this ideal sort of lift yourself up by the bootstraps, which is great. I'm not dogging hard work or ingenuity, mm -hmm. but it, it is, there's this unfairness about it. It shouldn't have to be that way. Right. 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 And, and the information's all there too. It's just a question of organizing it and giving people access to it. Um, and so if you kind of look at it, we made it very accessible and uh, the approach we've done as well is it, we don't charge small businesses. So you can use our technology. It's free for small businesses. The way that we make money is we license it and it sits on uh, government. It sits on either government or financial institution yeah. or accountant or accelerator website. So it sits on their websites. They like it because now they become this kind of one-stop funding shop. Yeah. Entrepreneurs love it because they can use it for free. Um, and, it, and it works for us because now we have a business model where we actually you know, work with all these partners, per se. So that's, that's the way we've been able to do it, to make it truly accessible to everyone, you know, really for free. Do you need to be in a, a specific industry to get funding for your company? For example, is there a trend technology, uh, restaurants? I don't know. Yeah. Um, who, who you see the majority of your users, your users to be? Yeah, so really it's across all different sectors. So we, we cover all of them. Um, certainly there has been, there's more funding for certain strategic areas. Interestingly enough, things like restaurants before COVID were not strategic areas for government. As soon as COVID came along, they became actually very strategic. They're the ones who are suffering mm -hmm. the most. Or they're the mm -hmm. ones who needed it the most. So, um, so we have a lot of programs that will cover right across the full spectrum. Uh, you know, there's a lot of well-known ones through COVID, but there's also very specific ones that fit just certain sectors uh, of the economy and certain, you know, ages or certain tasks or activities or different things. So we, we're always trying to figure out not only the industry, but a number of other kind of elements, which would give us a better idea of what program would fit best for them. Yeah, because it really is a, a song and dance. I imagine a lot of kind of different moving parts. 
Uh, I'm curious about, you know, your approach between your analysts and the people who are putting all this information together and your mashup of, of the technology on top of that. Um, can you talk a little bit more to like what that looks like or really the hard work that needs to go in to making something that seems so simple? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's constantly evolving. Him. So we built something. Originally, we just had analysts. We had a few analysts sitting around trying to collect information. Um, we've continually added more and more intelligence on top of that. So the bots help them a lot. The framework kind of tells most of, tells them, okay, what do they need to do next? Where are the important areas? Um, it's kind of like running, um, you know, a, a control center at an, an airport. You know, aircraft control. You know, they use a lot of technology to figure out what they should be looking at, what they should be doing. They don't just kind of rely and look out the window and say, mm -hmm. see this plane taking mm -hmm. off or not. So we're constantly building a lot. And just like you'd expect with something like Google, it looks very simple on the surface. Oh, you got a few programs and you just give us the best program. You know, the, the hard part is underneath the iceberg is where most of it sits. And that's there's a huge team that's always just trying to make it smarter and better. Um, and, uh, and, and, and the idea is that they really use technology as much as possible to, to make it simple. Um, but at the same time, um, it's not perfect. <laughs> There's always more work. We're never going to get rid of analysts. I think if you look at a search, <laughs> search engine like Google, they have teams of people who are still making sure the search results are relevant. And in our terminology, we call that profile testing. So yeah. we're always profile testing, profile testing and see, okay, does this still make sense? Uh, or is it make even more sense? Is it getting better? So that's what we're, we're always working at. So it's a, a lot of things that come together to make it work. That's super neat. And in terms, I imagine that some of this funding and what you're tapping into is, is it time sensitive? Are there expiration dates and elements that, uh, in terms of like submitting um, applications and whatever that might be, uh, is there also like an interactive component where maybe those people who are looking for funding are alerted to things or timelines or what might the interface sort of look like? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. If anyone wants to use a solution, it really just takes all of, uh, you know, a few minutes to go in. A, a good site to go test it, if someone would want to test it, I'll put it in right now. So SBDC NorCal, so SBDC Small Business Development Center NorCal, type in that and then type in Fundica. You'll go mm -hmm. in, you'll be able to sign up, figure, see it in a few minutes. But effectively, you go in, you're going to answer a few questions to start just to get us kind of positioned well. And then you'll see results. Um, nice. And you'll see them across the different types. Well, it's optional, but if we can capture additional information about, hey, I'm a woman, I'm uh, looking to export, I'm looking to hire interns of a certain site place, and I'm, I'm trying to do a few different things, uh, we'll get be able to get even more relevant results. So all that comes together. And then effectively in each program, you'll get to see, okay, a one pager. And on that one pager, there'll be a description, nice. there'll be the funding limits, there'll be the uh, funding kind of conditions uh, there'll be the, the contact information, so you can contact the funder right away. And then there's the actual guidelines, the, the application form. And again, there's a kind of a quick messaging system to get to them right away. So you kind of have that all at your fingertips. And the idea is that within a few minutes, you'll see the most relevant programs. You'll kind of favorite them. Um, and then from those favorite programs, you can kind of start the application process right there or come back later and continue it. And in going through all that, when the relevant programs come out, they're going to be tagged as, if, if that's the case, opening soon. So opening within the next 30 days, closing soon. So closing in the next 30 days, recently been modified. So there's something that's changed in that program in the last mm -hmm. 30 days. Um, so there's a number of tags we kind of put in. And if you choose, uh, you can get an, an update on a monthly basis as to, okay, these are the programs that are, have been, that are relevant to that entrepreneur that have gone that have these different tags on them so they're closing they're opening they've usually they've changed they're ones they favorite uh they're ones that are recommended for them so the answer is yes we're doing that in a, in a number of ways and it's really important that everything is you know up to date relevant and super accessible what do you mean with funding limits? I'm thinking about, for example, I have seen that there are companies that get three funding rounds in the first years. Is that what you meant or, or, or yeah, how? So, the, so there's, there can be different types of limits. So there's going to be a maximum amount they, they fund. Uh, there can be some stacking rules. Um, so, so those can be in place as well. 
Um, so we kind of categorize the different types of things that may be important deciding, okay, is this funding program good considering that I'm, I'm trying to, you know, do a certain thing or a certain, or I have certain other funding programs out there. So, um, so it's exactly what you said, plus a few other criteria. <laughs> if we want to take a step back and let's, I mean, I know your focus here is on the small and medium size, right? So not necessarily these enterprise levels who are, you know, getting 450 million series E from you know, private funding or something, but like focusing on these small and medium sized folks, um, maybe people who've never even done this before. What words of wisdom might you have for them, you know, based off your own frustrations, you know, years back of what led up to Fundica, but also how right. can I prepare myself? Like, what do I need to do to come in ready um, and, you know, know and be able to present um, in order to make this process go even smoother and avoid right. some of that frustration? Yeah. So one thing I would say, Kim, this is a great question. Um, I see that the biggest challenge I see entrepreneurs that are looking for funding is finding the right time to do it. Yeah. And um, so when you're looking for funding, before you look for funding, there's a few steps you should actually go through before you actually start the funding or looking for funding process. So the first thing would really be commercially viable product and market. So really make sure you have that market fit, as they say. Very easy to do today. Um, doesn't cost a lot of money. You can do these, these things. You can you know, do it either face to face with people. You can do it through the internet using some tools. I'm not talking about building a whole application or website. I'm just talking about trying to get reaction to different solutions. So that's the first step. And really you need to do that. If you don't get that, forget about funding. You're just wasting your time. Really. The next thing is to put together a team. Uh, almost all businesses require a team. So look for that team. That's a tough thing to do. It's hard to get really good people who are share the same vision, but that's a very important thing. So get that. Step three is you need a little bit of cash in hand. So kind of the dirty little secret about funding is <laughs> you need some money to go get more money, right? Um, so you need a little bit. Uh, you don't need a ton, but you're going to need to either have a part-time job, some family money, um, you know, uh, some money you saved in the past, something like that. So some kind of money you have part of you. If you have, if you kind of met all three of those things, so you have that product market fit, you have the team, you have a little cash in hand, then it's time to go for funding. And really government funding is the first place to start because it is the cheapest, uh, it should be the easiest to go get. Often overlooked just because there's so I many programs and people don't know where to go, but it's the first place you should go. It's the free money, right? As they say, um, it does take a bit of time. It's not guaranteed, but you know, if you can find it easily and it's really relevant and they have money, uh, it's it's great. It's it's like a windfall, right? So go look at the government money. The second thing would be private sector loans, but you do need some cash flow or you do need some assets for that. Uh, and then only if you need it, go get venture capital. So when you read the newspapers, you see, oh, so and so yeah, got yeah. ten million in funding, fantastic. They've gone through all these steps. Definitely, they had to have gone through all these steps. They may not have gotten any government funding, but they certainly would have looked at it uh, or. You know, they, they in, in most cases, they would have checked out what they can do there quickly. Maybe they did a lot of these, you know, research. Maybe it became too complicated, so they jumped over it. But here they would have thought through that. And they've only gone to this step because they really need the money. And the, mm -hmm. the, the challenge with the kind of VC funding is that it's they can give you a lot of money, but they expect to be paid back yeah. a lot more. Um, and, and they're going to make your life a little more difficult for sure. And with this economic recession, what would you recommend to those who are kind of scared to start this journey? Mm. Um, that's a good question, America. I would, uh, you know, the first thing I would kind of look at themselves and say, okay, you know, what do I want to do? Where do I want to go? So, um, you know, what else do I have going on in my life? So do a real assessment of where they're at. So if they're kind of like, you know, if their life passion is to build uh, a certain, you know, open a certain restaurant and that's what they've been trying to do forever um, and they have the ability to do it over the next while, then I would say go for it, you know, but go through these steps. Make sure people are going to, you know, going to come to this kind of restaurant. Make sure it makes sense. It's in the right location. Really do your homework. Get a bit of a team. Get a little bit of money because it's going to cost you at the beginning and then, you know, go to the other steps. So, uh I would say the first thing is to really self-assess and then if you can do it and you think you have the time, energy and, and interest, go through the, the funding and pre-funding process. 
Yeah, I think that's the really great advice. You, you know, coming back with, on the flip side of this, um, the title of the show today, Utros, is How to Become a Funding Champion. Mm -hmm. So we've talked a lot about the small, medium-sized businesses, the underrepresented, the people who want to utilize this funding. But how can you be that champion for, for this process? What, what does that look like on the flip side? Right. So the funding champion in a lot of cases, what I'm referring to here is maybe that bank uh, or that accelerator or that government agency. And they're like, oh, you know, I offer loans and I offer credit cards. And nobody uses them. <laughs> or and, yeah, them. <laughs> yeah, or, yeah. Or I get declined. Right. Yeah. So it's like, OK, great. You, so why not offer all the funding available? So here's some government funding. Here's the private sector loans. You know, here's the credit cards but really offer the full solution and say, listen, entrepreneur, I want to help you. You know, at the end of the day, you may not be ready for a loan. You may not be there for a credit card. Go, go check out these government programs, or you may already have a loan and you may have a credit card, but you know, here's some more money too. So mm -hmm. the idea is to become more of a kind of one-stop funding destination, that place where people go to, uh, to, to, to be, uh, to look for funding. Um, so that that's kind of the message we're trying to send out is that you can be that one stop shop with what we offer and it's not going to distract. In fact, it's going to improve your overall offering. Yeah. So that, I was that's just going to say, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, I think about this. I think sometimes it's so easy to live life, business, work and everything very short sighted. And in terms of the, yeah. the, the banks and everyone else that you listed, I get it. You know, a lot of times it's like, I want my money now. I want to focus on the people who are going to take out these loans and interest rates and, and whatever, and what's going to best sort of serve me. But in the long run, I think it's that give and take, right? You build that trust and like, look, I'm helping you, genuinely helping you to find, you know, the government loans or whatever that might be. And then knowing, or at least trusting and having this increased likelihood, right? That when it does come time and they're positioned for future loans or credit cards or everything else that you mentioned, that you've already come and you're going to be that, that, that source for them, you know, that trusted truth. And I think that's, that's really beautiful. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I, I, I saw an interesting presentation by one of the senior executives at Google and he put up on the screen, uh, helpful. We were at actually a financial institution conference or hmm. FinTech conference as well. Um, and he said, that's what banks need to be. Yeah. And that's what, that's what businesses, in fact, consumers are looking for. That's the way to describe it, to be helpful, right? And I think in life, that's really what we all be. This is an easy way to do it. We're just trying to be one extra element that would mm -hmm. make you very helpful. And, and, and that at the same time makes them relevant, makes them useful, makes them, uh, makes them you know, feel good about what they're doing. So, Yeah, it yeah. kind of goes back to the... Uh... I mean, I'm originally from the state of Montana. We don't have cities. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure there are more cows in my state than there are people, you know, uh, the largest city is, I think, pushing 100,000 people now. So it's a lot of this small town, small community bank type of service, where right. it's that first name basis and that trust basis and um, kind of going back to that feel. Like, I, I mean, I know that that's maybe uh, naive of me to think, but going back to this idea of helpful, like I, I trust you, you're actually here. You do have in fact, my best interests in, in, in mind, um, which sadly it feels like we've gotten away from that, particularly for you know the small businesses and the underrepresented. So right. it, it's a really beautiful sentiment. Thank you. Thank you. So let's bring it real back to you as we come to the final minutes of our show, a bit more about your your story and what this adventure has been like um, talking to your own experience of having to kind of find the funds in order to come up with Fundica in the first place and the ups and downs. What other words of wisdom might you have um, for those entrepreneurs? Right. In interesting story. First off, when we first built it and we tested it for the first time, we had, had my two co-founders next to me and um you know, the, the CTO who was an engineer kind of said, okay, it's all ready to go. The analyst at the time, woman engineer as well, she said, okay, I got all the data in there. We put the data, we put this list in together, we run it and said, okay, what are we going to try? And we said, let's try our postal code. Let's try our situation. We put it in. <laughs> Where can we get money? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we did that. And, and very honestly, the first program that came up, I'm like, I've never heard of that before. It's like, okay, let's try them. We called them. We're like, we're dying for someone like you. So they actually funded us a whole bunch of money. So um, 
it, it was kind of like, okay, it, it worked for us. That was a good sign. It was a very good sign for us. Um, my advice to other entrepreneurs is, um, I think first of all, follow the journey I, I kind of put out. So make sure you do the steps before you go to the funding. Mm -hmm. Second thing, use a solution like Fundica. It's free. It's easy. It's going to take a few moments just to find out uh, if you have, if there's funding available for you or not, it's kind of a no brainer. And it is, you know, there's a number of financial institutions that are using our tool or hopefully get some other ones to use it as well. And, and other, we call entrepreneur support organizations. So do something like that. So be, be smart about it. So leverage technology. And this is one of the ways to do it. Um, and, uh, you know, the last thing is just kind of follow your passion. You know, if you want to make a change in the world, go do it, you know, and, and there's probably some funding out there for it. So go for <laughs> I it. I bet. <laughs> the proof is in the pudding. I love that. Let's see. How can we get funded? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's free. Is there a premium account? So like some of the accountants will buy a premium account to do multiple profiles at the same time to export oh. and to do that. But all the data, everything is accessible in the free version. So oh. an entrepreneur will find everything they need. So there's no, no excuses or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No excuses. Exactly. We're not trying to upsell you. There, there's no upsell to the entrepreneur. It, it is all there. Um, so uh, where we upsell more is for the actual partners we work with. So they buy and they want more data. They want more mm -hmm. of this. They want help with SEO. They want help with all different types of things. We can help with that. But at the end of the day, the entrepreneur, very simple and easy and complete experience. Wow. I, I see that there is a lot of innovation. And I know that that is one of your core values as well as accessibility, dedication, and integrity. Why? Why did you choose these values for your company culture? You know, I think they just are. It's, these are the kind of things you, I don't even necessarily get to choose some of these things. These values are the ones we kind of have and ones we live with. I think it's why the values is why we're doing this in a way. Right? When you kind of think that way, you're like, this doesn't make sense. It's not accessible. It's not, you know, it, it doesn't represent our value. That's why we're doing it. Mm. So um, it's, it's just part of it, um, the way we are, I think. I love it. I think yeah. starting out that way, I think that's most good company stories, right? It's not, we're not picking these values out of a hat. It's like, what are we already living? And then looking back at that, it's very, very cool. It's kind of a funny thing. We, we actually had those values down there. And then we, our tagline came up much after our values were already on our website, even. Hmm. So democratizing access to funding was not our original tagline. And then we said, oh, that's kind of part of what we're already doing. Oh, yeah, we should say that. Okay, why don't we say it? That's, that's <laughs> what we're doing it. So. No, it's, it's really beautiful, really necessary. And I think it, it's extremely inspiring, um, particularly as America alluded to, you know, coming into a somewhat <laughs> these last I think three <laughs> years or so have been you know quite uh challenging it's just nobody knows what to expect anymore these days and so I think yeah. it's really awesome to have companies like Fundica out there who genuinely care who can genuinely help and um it restores you know faith in humanity faith in, in the future for me and, and realizing that you know not all not all is lost and if you have a dream if you have a passion you certainly can find ways to to make that happen. Yeah. Well, it's very nice of you. I mean, I hope we're, uh, we can do even more to help. And, um, and again, yeah, people will actually want to go try it out. So go to NorCal SBDC and then do a space Fundica, do that search in Google and you'll be able to find our solution pretty quickly on our right. website. We are not a destination for finding the funding. You have to go to a third party, like, like the SBDC. So um, perfect. We will do some, We'll do some updating on the landing page here at Dojo Live to make that clear for people as well. And then we can also, um, I believe you have a white paper coming out soon that we'll be including there. Yeah, there's, there's a white paper we'll put in and it's going to talk a little bit about that funding journey. Uh, so we'll make sure to put that there as well. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time today, your words of wisdom, your story and what you and Fundica are doing for small and medium sized businesses. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, America. You're welcome. Our pleasure. Stick around for just a minute as we go off air. But before we do go off air, uh, I do want to remind our viewers that this is, in fact, the last show of live show that is we for 2022. <laughs> yes, we're going to be going off, off air next week and the week after. Much needed break planning session and, of course, celebrating the holidays. 
But we do have a special recap show for you coming up on Monday where, we're re- where we will be recapping this week's show and also sharing with you our top and our personal favorites for throughout 2022. And then, of course, you can enjoy restreams of those shows coming up on Dojo Live. Do catch us again for our next live show on Tuesday, January Third, That's going to be the first one coming up. And we're going to be speaking with Charmaine Ali, CEO of InStoried. So don't miss it. Thank you again so much for joining us, Mike. Thank you. Yes. All right. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.